reverse shoulder replacement is a successful operation. We know that for patients with shoulder arthrosis in the setting of an incompetent uh, rotator cuff. It restored stability to the uh, glenohumeral joint by neutralizing the destabilizing forces of the deltoid, really converting them from translational forces to rotational forces. Uh, there are various types of prostheses on the market, and they all differ in terms of the way they fixate to the bone in both the glenoid and the humerus. A center of rotation, lateralization, whether it's coming from the glenoid or from the humerus, uh, and uh, the, size of the, uh, the size of the implant as well. Rotator cuff tear arthropathy uh, is, can be defined by three uh, distinct things. Rotator cuff insufficiency, and some people would call this pseudoparalysis, degenerative changes to the joint, as well as superior humeral head migration. Um, and that does remain the number one indication for reverse rotator cuff tear arthropathy. However, other indications exist, including massive cuff tears without arthritis, fracture in both the acute setting as well as in the uh, uh, later setting, or sequelae of primary osteoarthritis, as Ryan just showed us in a, uh, when there's decreased uh, uh, bone density or uh, limited bone in a glenoid or a retroverted glenoid or B2 glenoid. As well as rotator cuff tears, not necessarily uh, cuff tear arthropathy, but an elderly patient, uh, 70s or 80s, who do have a small tear or a large partial thickness tear, many, um, many of my indications are for reverses in these patients as well, and there are, and for revision surgery. So in terms of massive irreparable cuff tears, there are many types of surgeries we can do for this. Standard has always been arthroscopic debridement with or without biceps tenotomy or with or without a partial rotator cuff repair. We could do muscle transfers reverse shoulder arthroplasty, and now the latest and greatest superior capsule reconstruction, which we're certainly seeing a lot more of. Uh, Dr. Frankel first published on doing reverses in irreparable or massive cuff tears when there's no arthritis and did show that there was reliable pain relief, relief and uh, return of shoulder function. Christian Gerber uh, did the same in patients less than 65 years of age and did uh, show that there was significant improvement um, in terms of their motion and subjective scores. However, there was a high complication rate, and this has caused many of us, or many surgeons, to be gun shy of placing these in younger patients. Here is a, uh, a case of a 62 year old female. She had a massive cuff tear to her non dominant arm, her left shoulder of the super infra and subscap. It was attempted at open repair six months prior to presentation to me. Um, when she came to see me, she had severely limited motion with pseudoparalysis, forward flexion only at 50 degrees, minimal external rotation. Uh, she does, as you can see, her past medical history is significant for diabetes, coronary artery, uh, coronary artery disease, and uh, morbid obesity, all of which are not good prognostic signs for rotator cuff to heal. Uh, MRIs above are, do show the massive cuff tear of the super infra and the subscap. I did perform a CT scan uh, when she followed up with me, uh, showing severe atrophy to the supraspinatus as well as the infraspinatus. You can see on the coronal as well as the sagittal views there. So what do I do for this? Reverse. Uh, she did note uh, excellent outcomes rather soon. Most patients in, in massive cuff tears, if you do on the properly selected patient, they do have significantly improved range of motion in six weeks, similar to what Ryan just showed in his, uh, in his picture there. Another example, 79-year-old male, much older, with a massive cuff tear as well, pseudoparalysis. Now, you look at the x-rays, this 79-year-old guy, there's absolutely no arthritis that's visualized in the glenohumeral joint. However, you do see significant anterior superior escape. The uh, coronal view does show superior humeral head migration, and the uh, axial view does show uh, almost abutment of the, uh, the humerus to the uh, coracoid there uh, with an incompetent subscapularis. Uh, reverse shoulder replacement, again, works very well for this patient and I think is really the only uh, procedure to, uh, to do on a, on a patient uh, like that. Fractures remain another indication. Um, we do know that there have been inconsistent and poor results with hemiarthroplasty and, and ORIFs. I see you guys see that picture. That's a true patient that came into my office when I was a, a fellow, had about 15 surgeries on her arm uh, with those results there. Um, I did try to get my mentor to do a reverse. He wasn't happy. He, wouldn't, he didn't want it, though. But uh, the, the reason why we know with ORIFs and hemiarthroplasty they do poorly are uh, tuberosity complications. And the beauty of a reverse shoulder replacement is you don't need a functioning rotator cuff. Uh, recent literature has shown that there has been increasing trends in doing reverses for proximal humerus fractures. And when this study looked between 2009 and 2012, although hemiarthroplasty did remain the most common form of treatment for proximal humerus fractures, uh, the rate had declined while reverses have increased. And ORIFs kind of uh, stayed at a stable uh, rate the entire time. 
case example, 65-year-old with a uh, common rooted and displaced proximal humerus fracture. This is her dominant extremity. Reverse uh, was placed. You can see that there is good uh, reapproximation of the greater tuberosity to the implant on the lateral view to the right as well, which I fixed with fiber tape. Uh, another fracture, 74-year-old male, right-hand dominant, does have a significant past medical history, does have pre-existing shoulder arthritis as well. Uh, he does have a severely displaced greater tuberosity fracture uh, with a common root proximal humerus fracture. Uh, Post-op films do show good healing of the greater tuberosity and lesser tuberosity, which I, I fixed with uh, fiber tape. The guy, he has received great um, outcomes as well, and it did help that he had pre-existing arthritis prior to my surgery. This is a recent... Uh, uh, article that was recently published. It was performed by uh, Dr. Farmer and his colleagues uh, looking at the outcomes of reverse shoulder replacement uh, for uh, fractures in both primary and in a revision setting. And they looked at primary uh, reverses in acute fractures as well as in delayed fractures, meaning malunions or nonunions that had, uh, they had given some time for the patient before deciding to, to operate on them. They also compared these to revisions of HEMIs and ORIFs and did note that there was good outcomes to reverses for all fractures, whether it was revision or in acute settings. However, uh, primary reverses when done in an acute setting for fracture as well in malunions or nonunions were comparable in terms of results. Um, however, uh, when done compared to the revision setting, although revisions did well, they did not quite um, improve to the degree uh, that, uh, that a primary uh, replacement did. And I've found similar findings. This is a 74-year-old uh, female with left proximal humerus fracture one year out. You, this may be malunion or avascular necrosis um, that has occurred to her head. However, this is one year out from her injury. You put a reverse shoulder replacement and her improvements are significant uh, rather soon. And I, I compare them to improvements to a, um, a primary reverse that I'll do on a cuff tear arthropathy. Where in acute setting fractures, I do feel that they take longer to heal. Um, and to be honest with you, my standard of care, I, if a, a, a displaced proximal, uh, proximal humerus fracture, four part fracture, uh, in the right patient, I prefer to do a reverse on. However, three parts, sometimes I'll let them sit a little bit, see how they heal, see if their motion improves, and if not, they're at no loss. You give them a re reverse, and they improve significantly uh, rather soon. This is a different animal. This is a 76-year-old female who had a hemi placed 10 years ago. You can see that she does have a significant malunion of her, of her tuberosity with complete obliteration of the subacromial space. Uh, the stem was cemented. She had significantly limited motion. Um, I did convert this to a reverse, however, this is a much more difficult procedure. It required me to fracture the humerus, do an acorticotomy to remove the stem, and then place cerclage wire around after the implant was placed. Um, from my experience in, in, uh, in surgeries like this, function does not improve significantly. Pain does, however, it takes a long time. This, these are six months to nine months before the patient is, uh, ha does find significant improvements, and even, though, and even with that, functionality has not improved significantly. Uh, but this article was an article looking at reverse shoulders done for failed uh, shoulder arthroplasty, and they did say that there are improved functional outcomes. However, if you look at the last line, a reliable salvage operation for a challenging clinical problem. What, what I take from that is some revisions do extraordinarily well, others don't. And what, revisions that work well are what I call revisable uh, shoulder replacements, and this is an example of something that's highly revisable. This is a 61-year-old female who had left-hand dominant individual who had two previous surgeries. She had a hemicap placed for osteoarthritis. Uh, later, the, uh, the subscapularis failed and had a, a subsequent pec transfer for this. Uh, you can see there's superior humeral head migration as well as anterior subluxation of the humeral head. Uh, revising this to a reverse is pretty easy. Removing that hemicap is just like doing a, a, a cuff tear arthropathy. These patients improve significantly. The less trauma you can perform to a patient in a revision, in a revision setting, the better they will do, and the faster those outcomes will, will come. There's another, uh, another look at a failed uh, shoulder replacement. This patient had a reverse placed uh, one, year, uh, one year prior with uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, we've always been taught, and those who do shoulder arthroplasties, when uh, reverses were kind of the dead end, that was, the, that was it. What you revise this to is a a hemiarthroplasty, that's, that's pretty much it, especially if the glenoid, there's nothing left in the glenoid. However, with new technology and new implants, that's not necessarily the case. I put the Arthrex um, universe uh, glenoid and uh, glenosphere in there, but was able to keep the same stem in place. Again, less uh, things I had to do to her humerus, uh, and uh, her functionality improved significantly, and she heals fast. And she had good bony, uh, bone stock left in the glenoid. I actually took bone off of the uh, previous gleno uh, glenoid that was in there and use that to graft um, 
the, the new one that I placed. Other indications are primary osteoarthritis, and we just saw this, that uh, reverses can be done in faces of glenoid bone deficiency, posterior humeral head subluxation, and biconcave glenoids, uh, which you can see uh, on the pictures on the right. And uh, Gilles Walsh has uh, taught us this. He, he did show that there were poor uh, results with standard total shoulder replacements in a setting of biconcave glenoid and does recommend reverse shoulder replacements for this. Finally, another thing is tumor. This is a 68-year-old uh, female with a large uh, uh, lucent lesion to approximate humor. She was actually sent to me by our tumor oncologist. She had a very similar finding in her hip that he was planning to do some sort of hip arthroplasty on. Um, however, had concerns for this. Um, you can see that the humeral head is completely obliterated pretty much. There's certainly no lesser tuberosity and no, no functioning subscapularis. And in this case, a reverse shoulder arthroplasty is certainly indicated in my books. Um, I, would, I uh, also allow my patients to weight bear on this with a walker uh, postoperatively. And that was important for her after she had her hip uh, done. And I put a long stem cemented reverse in there. So in conclusion, there are expanding indications for reverse total shoulders due to new technology, prostheses, and techniques. Uh, my current indi indications are listed below, and by far, in a way, the number one is rotator cuff tear arthropathy. However, I do feel uh, these expanding indications with massive irreparable cuff tears, revision surgeries, proximal humerus fractures, and uh, primary osteoarthritis in a retroverted glenoid, as well as tumor, are acceptable indications.